Uh, well, I'm thinking about how I can teach uh, fractions to my students. Yeah, what comes to your mind when you hear the word fraction? Cookies? Baking cookies! What are fractions? Fractions are part or parts of a whole. Let's take this circle to represent a whole. If we divide this circle into three equal parts or amounts, each of those amounts is a fraction of the original whole. Each of the piece is a part of the whole. How do we write fractions? To write fractions, you need two numbers, one on top and one at the bottom, and a line is drawn in between. The bottom number tells us how many parts the whole is divided into, while the top number tells us how many parts we have. Let's take a look at this example. How many parts is our whole divided into? You're right, eight total parts. Now, how many parts do we have? You're also correct. We have 8 parts. The fraction is 8 over 8 or 1 whole. What happens if one part is taken out of the whole? Well, the circle is still divided into 8 equal parts. Therefore, the bottom number will still be 8. While the top number will be 7 because we only have 7 left. Our fraction is 7 eighths. The top number is called numerator, while the bottom number is called denominator. Now remember, the part that you divide the whole into should be equal. Now let's have this example before we check on Emily's baking. The shaded part represents the part that is taken away. How many parts is the whole divided into? Correct, three. Now how many parts is left? Good job, two thirds. Using the same example, can our answer be a different fraction? Yes, it can. It depends on the question. If the question asks for what part is shaded pink, our answer is going to be one-third. Or, if the question asks for what fraction part is taken or given away, then our answer will be one-third. Okay, let's go ahead and check on Emily's baking. Okay, so let's start baking. What's the first thing that you would do? Butter. Butter, okay. Butter. Okay, then after the butter, what's next? Did you hear that? Three-fourths cup of sugar. How would Emily measure the correct amount of sugar she needs? Let's have some illustrations. Emily is using a measuring cup to measure her dry ingredients. One cup will represent our whole, and she needs three-fourths cups of sugar. Use your knowledge of fractions to know how to measure the sugar Emily needs. We know that the denominator tells us how many parts we divide the whole into. In this case, we divide it into four equal parts. Each part is one part out of the four total parts, or we can say one-fourth. Emily needs three from those four total parts. She needs three-fourths. Emily also has one-fourth measuring cup. So she will use the one-fourth measuring cup three times for her to measure three-fourths sugar that she needs. Um, we need one and three-fourths cup of flour. Okay. Now we need one and three-fourths cup of flour. So that means we need one whole 
and 3 4 cups. Remember, this is 1 4 so to make 3 4 we need 3 of this, right? So we need 1 cup plus 3, three of this flour. Okay, so let's have this. Okay, so after the flour and the baking powder, what's next? Now we need one egg to add to this mixture. Okay, one egg. Now when we buy eggs, usually they come in dozen. Okay, so one dozen is equal to 12 pieces. Now we can relate fraction to this again. So this 12 eggs is considered one whole. And each part of this whole, each piece of egg is considered a fraction. So one out of the 12 pieces okay so this is like our one whole and we split it into 12 pieces which is represented by our 12 eggs so one egg is one part of those 12 pieces so get four eggs that's gonna be four of the 12 the 12 total so it's gonna be four 12 if I get six eggs that's gonna be six of the 12 so that's gonna be six 12 okay so how many eggs do we need? One. Just one. So will I just break it in the middle? No. I'll break it in there. Okay, do you want to break it? Okay, so we're done baking while learning about fractions. We hope you had fun. Until next time. Math Mom out. Bye. Oh, before I forget, for your homework, I want you to discuss with your family ways on how you use fractions at home. So see, even in the simplest things that we do at home, we are using fractions. Just like Emily and I, we use fractions while baking. So I hope you have a good discussion. Bye!